One of my favorite things in the world to do is watch Friends. I know it's been off for years and years. It's not even around, but I still find myself binge watching old episodes. And I was thinking about this today and thinking it's the predictability of the friends in the circle, right? You have Chandler with his quirkiness, Monica with her type A of just everything has to be so neat and tidy and organized. It's Phoebe's ability to make you laugh at her silly songs. Ross always comes in with those smart comments and Joey and him and his food, like it is just so hilarious. And of course, Rachel, she just brings everybody together and it's just such this beautiful, cohesive team of people. And it's why I wanted to come on and share with you today that I have an opportunity for you to find your friends in the content creation space. So if you are thinking about creating your first or your next digital course, I don't want you to miss this opportunity because Amy Porterfield just opened the doors for registration for her course, Confident Bootcamp. And I'm actually offering a special bonus for anyone that registers for the course. Course Confident Bootcamp through my special link. So I want you to go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register. That's crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And what you're going to find when you get there is I have this special bonus private podcast series. It's called Money Mindset for Creators. So I want you to go register for Amy's bootcamp download the podcast and immediately start listening to it because what this training is set up to do is to help you get your mind right about monetizing your content, making money so that you can fuel your content creation dreams. So go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register for course confident. And I cannot wait for you to find your friends and find the people that will be there for you. Do you see what I did there? Yeah. Nice little friends segue connection. Go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And I cannot wait to see you inside. Okay. Let's get into today's episode. Y'all, nothing excites me more than talking about podcasting. I've I've had some people tell me like, you know, Crystal, you really light up when you talk about it. So that's how I know that you're totally into this podcasting stuff. And it just makes me laugh and it makes me a little embarrassed. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, they think I'm a total nerd. I'm the biggest dork alive who is obsessed with podcasting. But It's true, and that is what, like, it's just the thing that lights me up so much. And I wanted to let you know that Profit Podcasting is going to be opening again for the last time in 2019 at the end of November. So if you want to be around this energy, like, I can't even tell you how much I get excited every single day. I hit the ground, and I just think... I'm so blessed to talk about podcasting and teach other people about podcasting. If you want some of that energy, then I encourage you to join the waitlist for Profit Podcasting. You can find all the information and what the course is all about at ProfitPodcasting.com. And I encourage you to join the waitlist because this is going to be the last time the doors open in 2019. And I encourage you to grab your spot because... This is it, guys, for 2019. So I want you to jump in. We have so many fun things in store. And if starting a podcast in 2020 is on your to-do list, you need to be in Profit Podcasting. So join the wait list, and I will see you there. So I'm doing things a little bit differently today because, okay, first, I'm recording in my closet, which y'all know. I always do because the office echoes so bad, but I'm recording on my new Tascam recorder because I'm just going to be honest. I'm sick of hauling my laptop and my microphone back and forth from my closet, and this is literally just a little bit bigger than my cell phone. So today's episode is brought to you by, no, I'm just kidding. This is not sponsored by Tascam, but um, this is a super cool device that I'm going to do an entire YouTube video on. 
pretty soon to show you how I use it. But anyway, okay, we're getting sidetracked. Just sidetracked. I can't even talk. We are talking about podcast branding boards and how you can create one. So in the last episode, we talked all about podcast branding, the when, the where, and the how, and the basics of what you need to know about podcast branding. So today, we're talking about how you can actually create a podcast branding board. So let's get right to it. Welcome to the Profit Podcast, where we teach entrepreneurs how to start, launch, and market their podcast. I'm your host, Crystal Prophet, and I'm so excited that you're here. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Because if you've been thinking about creating a podcast for a while, well, I'm so glad you found this show. Think of this as the shortcut slash time-saving version of searching Google and YouTube for hours and hours trying to figure out the world of podcasting. Trust me, as a busy mama of three, I get it. You don't have a lot of time to be spent or wasted, I should say, searching the web, trying to find all the right ideas and all the amazing things that are out there and you just end up overwhelmed. Trust me, I've been there, done that, took home the souvenir. But this podcast is gonna help you in practical ways because twice a week we'll be delivering episodes that are gonna give you steps to help you create a podcast your audience can't wait to listen to. So let's get right to it, shall we? So like I said in the beginning, we're doing things a little bit differently today. And I'm just like, this is really nice, y'all, because I just have my phone with my Google Docs open and I have my portable recorder and this is really nice. There's still laundry all around me though. Like one day I will get all of these laundry baskets and the clothes inside of them into their proper places. But that day is not today. Okay, so let's talk about what is a podcast branding board. So there's a lot of power that comes with being able to spot a brand from miles away. And I know I mentioned this in the last episode about Starbucks and Target and their logos being like a beacon of serenity and joy to this tired mama of three little boys. But for those mega companies, branding didn't just happen overnight right? Like it's not like somebody just said, you know what? I think that we want to be one of the biggest brands on the planet and poof, it happened. No, that, that is not how this works. They were consistent with their messages, their colors, their fonts, and how they just overall represent themselves around the globe. So you can have that money that there is an entire team. Oh, sorry, I totally said that wrong. I read, I read my own words wrong. Like, guys, I don't even know what's going on, what's happening. So you can bet money that there is an entire team dedicated to making sure that every single piece of content that Starbucks and Target, like everything they put out, whether it's in a commercial, in social media, in an ad somewhere, is going to be consistent with their brand. And these mega million dollar companies, like it just doesn't happen overnight. Like don't compare yourself and your brand new baby podcast or even your podcast that you've been doing for a while. Don't compare, like there's just no comparison for you and Target. Did, did you hear what I just said? What you're doing and Target and Starbucks are not even in the same universe. And that has nothing to do with your ability to brand yourself. It's just, think about how old those brands are, right? They've been at this for a long, long time, okay? So don't get discouraged as you try to figure out your branding. It's going to take time and it's going to take consistency in order to establish yourself as a podcast brand in the online world, okay? But these companies started the exact same way everyone else does. They started at zero. Zero, right? I'm sure that they've tried a few things and some things work 
and some didn't. And they decided to write down the things that, hey, this worked. Let's try this again. And I'm sure they had a file somewhere that said, don't ever do this again because this was a terrible choice. So that's all I'm asking you to do. That's all I'm asking you to try. I want you to try as many things with your podcast brand and play around with ideas until something sticks. If you already have an established brand, let's say you already have a following or a platform from somewhere else and you're just adding a podcast into the mix, then this exercise will probably be super easy. It may even just take you five minutes to put together a podcast branding board. You may already have the fonts and the colors and the images that you use already and you're just going to apply the same principles to your podcast. But if you are brand new, you are brand new to the game. And your podcast is going to be the first brand you're putting out into the online world, then listen up. There are a few things I want you to consider before you start putting anything out on platforms and websites and social media. Okay, if you've already done it, it's okay. Because like I said, you can try things and you can switch things up. I've rebranded several times. Oh my goodness, I wish y'all could see. It's not even out there anymore, but my very first website, no. Oh my, I would be embarrassed for you to see it right now anyway. It's not up. It's not there. But y'all, trust me, you can rebrand yourself. (laughs) But think of your podcast branding board like it's like your one sheet that represents how you want your images and your posts and your website and your social media and everywhere you show up online, you want that to match this podcast branding board. So let's dive into creating this board for you. What do you put on a podcast branding board? So I want to go into the things to consider for your brand board. And then we're going to talk about how to make one. And actually, I'm going to give you an example of my own brand information and how I did this. But I took an online course last year that was for bloggers. It was Elite Blog Academy. And I'll link to it in the show notes. That way you can check it out. They only open the doors I want to say once, maybe twice a year if you're on their wait list, but um, it's basically marketing one-on-one for an online business for like the digital space. Does that even make sense? I don't even know if that made sense, but um, I went to college and got a four-year degree in marketing, but this course was the first time that the branding concept ever really stuck into my brain. Y'all, I took so many marketing one-on-one classes, consumer behavior, market research, like all kinds of stuff. But this course was the first time in my online journey that someone had asked me, what are your brand colors and all the things. So there was this exercise in the course where you sat down and you picked the fonts you wanted to use on your website, your social media, and all the places that you showed up. We also picked colors. Um, Let me see. We like compared font styles together that would complement each other. And I'm going to link to some resources of how you can do this. But it was so much fun. And I just, I'd never thought about this prior to blogging. Um, I had used Canva for a while. And I would notice that some of the templates they had on there the fonts looked awesome because they were paired together well. And y'all, I'm not a graphic designer. I don't know this stuff. And if you're not in the graphic design world, you probably don't know this either. But let me let you in on a little secret. There are fonts that are complementary and that totally work together. And then there are some that make your listeners or your readers, like whoever's looking at your stuff, kind of squint their eyes and say, I cannot read that. I don't know what that says. So you could put all of your marketing efforts into making all this amazing stuff and then no one's going to see it because it looks terrible. Ooh, that sounds like harsh words. I'm just keeping it real, guys. I'm keeping it real. So now that I'm in the podcasting world, I've taken all of this knowledge, all the stuff that I learned in Elite Blog Academy, and I brought it over to this brand, this podcast, everything that I'm doing in my journey today. So for your podcast branding board, I want you to select fonts. And like I said, I'm going to link to some resources that can help you pick complementary fonts that work really well together. Then I want you to pick colors 
including the hex codes that you can use across platforms. And I'm going to talk, I'm going to show you exactly what hex codes are and what I'm talking about um, in a second. And then the images. These are the types of images that you want to represent the feel of your brand and how you want things to look. And then the last thing is shapes. So shapes is kind of like a funky one to throw in there, but I've noticed that a lot of brands either use like boxy kind of shapes or they use rounded or circles. And you will definitely see this if you go to my show notes because um, the default for a lot of my pictures and images is to have them very boxy and I like a rounded edge. I don't know what it is. I prefer rounded edges. Now you'll see some of my landing pages have those like sharp, jarring, that's what they look like to me, like jarring squares, like right angles. I don't know why. I'm just not a fan of those, but I leave them on my landing pages because they look good there. But for my typical post, I have images with rounded edges. I don't know why, but it is... Being a woman in business comes with its own unique set of challenges, but also so many opportunities. We get ahead by leaning in to what makes us different from business as usual. I'm Samantha Hartley, host of Profitable Joyful Consulting, inviting you to a special six-episode series exploring the experience of being a woman in business. You want to hear from women consultants who've hit a million dollars, who sell six-figure engagements, or who've broken their own revenue ceilings? Yeah, those are my clients, and they'll be sharing too. Join me for six must-listen episodes that tackle key challenges for women consultants. Follow Profitable Joyful Consulting on your favorite podcast app. More appealing to me, and it is what I like, and it's my website, so I can do what I want. But here is a checklist for what you need on your podcast branding board. Your fonts, colors, images, and shapes. Because these are the key components that will have your audience or your potential audience slow their scroll. And I love that. I love that term. I know someone made it up somewhere else. I did not coin that term, but I have no idea who said it first, where I first heard it. So I'm just going to say some great mind. The great philosopher of the 21st century said, hold up, slow your scroll. Anyway, people will immediately begin to recognize your brand once you stick to consistent branding concept everywhere you show up online, just like Starbucks and Target. But this doesn't have to be the like perfect representation of how you want your brand and your podcast to look forever and ever, amen, but it's a good place to start. Like I already told you, I've rebranded a few times now. Just know that you can always change these things moving forward. And if you've already done this and you're interested in learning about how to rebrand your podcast after you've launched, I did an entire episode about this that I'm going to link to in the show notes. So we've kind of talked about what is a branding board. Now we're going to talk about actually making one. You know what needs to be on there. How are you going to make one? I've used Canva. Canva.com, I mentioned it several times, it's a free platform that you can use to create your branding board. So since I work solo, basically 99% of the time, I'm the only one creating marketing materials, posts, and other information for this podcast that has my branding on it, which makes it really easy to set this up in Canva, even in the free version, I use the free version, and be able to have consistency across your content. Y'all, they give you so many amazing templates and just so many cool tools. So if you haven't checked out, go to canva.com. It will save your life. You are welcome. I like Starbucks gift cards if you would like to send me a gift because I would truly appreciate it because I just changed your life. If you've never used Canva, you're going to say, holy moly, Crystal's amazing. What can I send her? A Starbucks gift card. I will never turn one of those down. But if you have someone that works with you or you eventually want to hire someone uh, like a VA or a graphic designer or somebody like that to work with you in the future, you need to have a branding board in place. You need to have all of this information in one place so people know 
how to make all of your stuff look consistent. I have my hex codes. So I told you I would talk more about hex codes. Um, I have my hex codes memorized for all of my colors. Like I will spout them off to you right now because that is how cool I am. So the bluish green teal kind of color, I still don't even know exactly what it is to call it. I'm because I'm in my closet. I can see it's I have several pieces of clothing that are this color, which is why I love this color. It's not teal. It's not green. It's not blue. I'll have to find the proper name for it, but I love this color. And the hex code for it is OAFFD6. And I know that makes me sound super dorky. I don't even care. But where I got that number or that hex code, because it's not really a number, right? I just told y'all numbers and letters. But that hex code is from Canva. That's where I got it. I originally found this color. I played around with several different colors that I wanted to use. But when you're in Canva and you choose the color palette, like it gives you all the different colors, like the primary colors and other ones that you can choose from. But if you go to the little plus sign, that's the color palette, right? It's all the colors you can find online. And you can go and click on that color and it will, like, there will be a code that appears right under in the box in Canva. It, it'll appear right there. And that is where you can grab the hex code for that color. And I'm going to link to this in the show notes, but there's also a super cool tool that's like an eyedropper. So if you're on someone else's website and you like that color, maybe you want a lighter shade of it or a darker shade, there is this little eyedropper app that will grab the hex code from wherever it is online and then that way you can at least have a place to start so sit like sit here now if you don't have brand colors and think about like what is your favorite color or is there a website or someone that you follow or anything like that is there a place where you've seen the color that you know you want to use for your podcast then go to that website grab this little eyedropper tool or whatever it is And go grab that hex code, go into Canva, pop the hex code in, and poof, that will be your color. Adjust it however you want, make it lighter, darker, make it more transparent, whatever you want to do. But that is what I'm talking about whenever I say a hex code. So in the show notes, I'm going to show you exactly, like there was going to be a walkthrough little tutorial of how you can do this in Canva. So make sure you go check that out crystalprofit.com slash episode 98. And that is where you're going to find the actual example from my own podcast branding board. It's going to have the fonts that I use. So I use about four or five different fonts, but it just depends on what it is that I'm doing. So if you follow me on Instagram at crystalprofittx, Crystal with the K, Profit with two F's and two E's, and then TX, just like Texas, then you can find um, the graphics that I put out every time I put out a new episode. So it's funny. I will tell you exactly what all those colors and everything is on one of those images. And I'm going to put this in the show notes. But for this podcast episode, the background color of that graphic is 292929. That is the hex code for that grayish color. And then the green color is the OAFFD6. Then the red color is FF5757. And then the fonts that I use on there are Open Sans. And then this caveat, caveat, I can't even say that, brush. And it's like the bold version of that. And then the white is just plain white. So that's what I use, guys. Like it's not rocket science but it's also one of those things I feel like a lot of people don't talk about because I think a lot of people just assume oh well you know this is that's that's what they use so that's cool but it really is as simple as just picking something and going with it just try it I know I've used the Roboto I probably should just say Roboto Roboto or Roboto Roboto I don't know (laughs) The more I think about it, the sillier it sounds. But I use that in all of my Google Docs. I don't know what it is. I just have to default every single Google Sheet, Google Doc, 
anything that I create has to be in that font. It just is more pleasing to my eyes. Like even as I'm reading this Google Doc here on my phone, that is what I have. So I'm going to link to all this stuff in the show notes. Like I said, go to crystalprofit.com slash episode 98, and you can find all these examples and everything that I'm talking about. And please let me know if you have any questions. Like if something is not clear, message me, hit me up on Instagram, send me a private message on Facebook, send me an email, whatever it is that you need to do. If you're not on my newsletter, you need to get on the newsletter, okay? You can go get... The Ultimate Podcast Checklist is a great place to start or sign up for the free five-day podcast boot camp and that will automatically add you to my weekly newsletter and that is where you can just hit reply on one of those emails and say, hey, Crystal, this podcast branding stuff, I need some help. I don't know what I'm doing or could you walk me through exactly how you did this? But a lot of this, it's really just choosing something, guys, and just picking it and going with it and trying it out. And then you'll have people that say, oh, I love your stuff. And some some people that love you will say, I don't really like your stuff or it's hard to read or have you ever thought about changing this or changing that? And for the record, I actually had a conversation about this today. Somebody told me, uh, one of my students posted in one of our groups that her husband did not like one of her images that she was selecting for her podcast. And I just started laughing and I responded and I said, well, my husband actually hates my brand colors. He has begged me multiple times. Have you ever thought about changing your brand colors? Cause he does not like them. And I just crack up and I'm like, well, it's a good thing. It's not your business and what you're doing. Oh, that sounds so bad. I shouldn't say that. He's going to kill me that I said that, but it's true. I told him, I'm like, you're not my ideal customer anyway. So it's okay that you don't like my brand colors, <laughs> but that does it for this episode. So if this is your first time tuning in, I'd love for you to subscribe and hear the other fun things that we're going to be talking about in the next few weeks. Be sure to sign up for the free five-day Create Your Podcast Bootcamp at crystalprofit.com slash podcast bootcamp. And check out the other great resources we have in the resource library. And like I said, the show notes are at crystalprofit.com slash episode 98. And remember, keep it up. We all have to start somewhere. Hey, Profit Podcast listeners, thanks for sticking around to a little bit after the episode to hear this special message because I want to hear from you. We are starting a new segment called Fan Mail Shoutouts, and I want to hear from you and I want to hear your questions. What do you want to know? What questions have you been dying to ask me? So here's how to make this happen. Go to the app where you're listening to this podcast right now. Go there. I'll wait a second. Okay. Now, once you're there, you're going to see a hyperlink at the top of the episode description that says, send Crystal a text message. And that's all I want you to do. Send me a text. It could be casual, informal. It could be totally anonymous. Or if you want, you can include your name and the name of your podcast or content, wherever you are creating. And I will give you a special shout out in an upcoming episode. So again, go to the show notes for where you're listening to this episode right now. And it will say, send Crystal a text message. And I cannot wait to hear from you and give you a shout out in an upcoming segment of fan mail shout outs.